are based upon the 14th Amendment, and I was surprised by that. I thought it would be much narrower. And, and in the, the opinion in the case you argued, that you won, uh, they, they spent a lot of time, the justices in that opinion spent a lot of time talking about precedent and the importance of precedent to uh, the institution, uh, institutional integrity of the court. In Alito's draft, he wrote uh, that precedent is not an inexorable command and that it's at its weakest when we interpret the Constitution. Last week, uh, Justice Thomas said that precedent uh, was a, a mantra when we don't want to think. You just talked about what the impact this might have on other cases and other rights. Talk about that uh, a little bit, what, what this may, might vote for the future. Well, I think the, the really uh, critical part of the decision is that five justices of this court have said that they can overrule a long history of support for uh, civil rights and civil liberties because they individually disagree with it. And that has never been the case. What has, uh, the, the doctrine of stare decisis says that when a uh, law is made, uh, it ought to be respected from generation to generation and only in you know, really uh, specific circumstances when the underlying law has changed, when the uh, circumstances, the factual underpinnings of a case have changed, uh, it ought to be upheld. And um, I think the hard part here is, let's think about this, we have had five decades of support for Roe versus Wade. The entire generations of women in this country have relied upon this decision and frankly ordered their lives. Millions of women have obtained abortions as a result of war, uh, and all of that is being rolled back because five individuals decided, in my view, willy-nilly, to change the law. And I think that is uh, a real uh, hit on the institutional integrity of this court. Justice Alito, I think, tried to address that when he wrote that uh, uh, that abortion is different from the other sort of liberty-based rights the court has found, like intimate sexual relations, contraception, and marriage. He said that abortion uh, destroys a life, and therefore it's different. Uh, what do you make of that? Well, first of all, the, the rights guaranteed in Roe are what I think of as reciprocal. It is the right to make a decision to have an abortion, but also to decide to carry a pregnancy to term. That is, uh, to uh, go both ways. It, uh, it's protecting the decisional interests of the woman. And so that's no different no matter if you're using contraception or you're deciding to be sexually active with a person of the same sex or you decide to uh, in, enjoy uh, same-sex marriage or even interracial marriage. All of those rights are based on the liberty clause of the 14th Amendment, which says that uh, important decisions about every person of all people's lives uh, ought to be protected. They ought to belong to the individual, not the politicians. The draft that was leaked is marked first draft. In your case, the case you won, uh, which is referred to as Casey, we learned much later that there was a first draft that was quite different from where the court ended up. Talk about, tell us about that. Yes, right after my oral argument, the court uh, retired to their uh, conference room was a vote of the justices, and five justices did vote to overrule Roe. At the time, Chief Justice Rehnquist wrote a draft opinion, and I know much narrower than uh, Justice Alito's draft opinion. But Justice Kennedy, at the last minute, changed his vote, uh, joined with uh, Justice Souter and Justice O'Connor, and came up with uh, the decision in Casey, which protected the right to choose abortion, uh, gave states greater ability to restrict those rights, but ultimately meant that for the last uh, two decades, we've had legal abortion in this country. Um, the interesting part of that is that, you know, everyone says, well, that could happen here. I don't think so. There's no Justice Kennedy on this uh, All of the, the members in the majority, the five justices who uh, join uh, the four justices who join Samuel Alito uh, are are very very conservative. They come from the anti-abortion movement. They were nominated on the promise of reversing Roe, uh, and I just don't see uh, any of these uh, ideologically based justices uh, changing their minds as Justice Kennedy.
do you think, I mean, this obviously was a first draft. I think it's it's two months old. It's hard to believe it's not already obsolete. That there are other more current drafts. There's a more current draft. Do you think any of the language is going to change? Any that you talked about, anything is going to change? I think there may be some some moderation in the language, but the reality is, is there are five very, very ultra-conservative justices who are intent on undermining the ability of women to be equal in this society, and that makes it as personality. Catherine Colbert, who argued for Planned Parenthood in Planned Parenthood v. Casey. Thank you very much. Thank you. And on tomorrow's news hour, we will hear from the lead attorney opposed to abortion rights. of the poor. 